In this video in my Valentine series I'll be showing you how to make a heart shaped chocolate tart. This mini series is based all around how you can bake your own little Valentine's treats to make that loved one feel extra special at Valentine's. For the pastry shells of the tart I'll also be making those heart shaped. As you can see here I'll be using small individual heart shaped tins, they're relatively inexpensive to buy and non-stick are the best to use. I'll just give a quick recap here on how to line a tart shell as obviously with the heart shaped ones it's slightly different. You do need to be careful that the pastry doesn't tear when you try and line the tin and it is a bit awkward around the edges, although if your pastry is at room temperature it will work much better. For the full video tutorial on how to make your own sweet pastry why not check out the video available on the channel and while you're there why not hit subscribe and turn on that notifications bell. When you're lining a pastry shell that's anything other than round, be sure that your paper goes into the corners as much as possible to prevent any rising. And as you can see here, for my baking beans, I've always used rice as you don't need to waste your money on expensive baking beans. Blind bake your pastry shells as you would for any other normal blind bake in a pastry and also trim as you would normally. Now let's crack on with the main filling, as you can see here the ingredients are separated into two separate batches. The chocolate, butter and cream will be melted and the eggs and sugar will be used to make a sabayon. Place the ingredients for your chocolate filling over a low heat and allow to melt slowly. While it's melting, place the eggs and sugar over a medium heat on a pan and then using a whisk, whisk slowly to make your sabayon. As you can see here, I use an electric whisk on a very low setting. A sabayon is a sauce made with eggs and sugar that's very light and fluffy and will add a lot of air to the mix. I've used a time lapse here to show the making of the sabayon, but for rough reference, this took about four and a half minutes to make. You want to keep whisking the egg mixture until it becomes ribbon stage. Be careful to remove from the heat as soon as possible when you hit the ribbon stage, otherwise you will begin to overcook the eggs and they may possibly scramble. Once your sabayon is ready and the chocolate mixture has melted, add the two together, pour the chocolate very gently down the side of the bowl and fold in well. You want to take extra care not to knock any of the air out of the sabayon mixture. Fold the mixture as gently as possible until fully combined and you have one uniform colour. Gently add the chocolate mixture to your tart shells. Spread the mixture as evenly as possible and once the tart shells are nearly full use a plastic spatula to scrape down any remaining chocolate mixture in the bowl and try to make sure that the mixture is even as possible across all the tart shells. If you are enjoying the video be sure to give it a like, share and leave a comment down below and for lots more cooking and baking why not subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications bell. Bake at 160 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes, although this may vary depending on the oven, but be very careful when cooking as they can very easily overcook. You could just serve the tarts as they are seen here, although I like to do a bit of extra garnish on top just to make it that little bit extra special. As you can see here, as the tarts cool down, the air does escape out of the mixture, which does leave a dip inside, which is perfect to add a bit of chocolate ganache over the top. I just top mine with a very simple chocolate ganache that is just chocolate and cream. Place the chocolate and cream into a heat proof bowl and then place over a medium heat and allow to melt together. Place 
Place a sheet of baking paper onto your countertop to catch any chocolate that drips. This will make cleaning up later on a lot easier. And then when your ganache has all melted together, spread evenly over the tops of the tart. I tried to keep mine centralised into the tart, although if you wanted to, you could make a larger batch of ganache and drip it all the way across that it oozes over the side of your chocolate tart. When you're happy with how you've spread out your chocolate ganache, put the tarts into the fridge to chill completely. Across the top of the tart I'm going to garnish it with a little bit of white chocolate in a pattern. Take a heart shaped cutter and just press very gently onto the top of the tart just to give the outline of a heart. And then melt some white chocolate and place into a paper piping bag. It's important to use a paper piping bag as you want the tip of the piping bag to be rigid which will help you pipe the chocolate a lot easier. Starting with the mark that your heart shaped cutter has left on top of the chocolate ganache, make an outline of a heart initially and then inside I've just decided to do a nice zigzag pattern although if you're feeling adventurous you could always leave a message to a special loved one inside. Whilst the white chocolate is still melted, take some cocoa powder and just dust very very gently across the top just to give it that finishing effect. If you are enjoying the video be sure to give it a like, share and leave a comment down below and for lots more cooking and baking why not subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications bell. And there we have our heart shaped chocolate tart. This would make for a great dessert on Valentine's Day and would also make for a great gift for a special loved one. If you have enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like, share and why not consider subscribing to the channel to see lots more cooking and baking including more of the Valentine's series. And for more cooking and baking why not check out one of the videos on screen now.